Fight Every Crisis, Global Perspectives of a Post-Corona Economy. On behalf of the Cusanos University and our cooperation partners for today's session, the Environment Defense Foundation FUNAM, the Campus Cordoba of the Right Livelihood College and the Right Livelihood Foundation, I welcome you all to our digital lecture series. My name is Benjamin, I'm the facilitator of this series. It's my pleasure to welcome and introduce to you our speaker today, the 2004 Laureate of the Right Livelihood Award, also known as Alternative Nobel Prize, Raul Montenegro. Raul Montenegro is a biologist, environmentalist, and activist. He has been professor of evolutionary Bio biology at the National University of Cordoba in Argentina since 1985. In 1982, he was the principal founder of FUNAM, the Environment Defense Foundation, and has been its president since 1995. Raoul has been a member of the executive committee of the Environment Liaison Center International in Nairobi and vice president of Greenpeace from 1987 to 1989. Uh, he has been initiating an astonishing range and number of environmental activities. For instance, just to mention one, he stopped the plan of a Canadian-backed nuclear power plant in Guatemala. And in addition to all that, Raul Montenegro has had a full academic life. He has come up with theoretical concepts in order to increase the knowledge and understanding of balanced ecosystems and has managed to bridge the gaps between the environment, development, universities, citizens, and NGOs. In all his activities, he combines his expertise in science with community-based campaigning and an ability to generate enormous media coverage. So no wonder he's, he received numerous awards, of which I also mention only two. The Right Livelihood Foundation awarded him, as mentioned earlier, with the Alternative Nobel Prize, inter alia for his outstanding work with local communities and indigenous people to protect the environment and natural resources. In 1998, Raoul was in Salzburg as one of four recipients to be accorded the Nuclear Free Future Award. Without a doubt, it's a great pleasure to have you here today, Raoul. Thank you very much for making this possible. Your presentation is entitled Coronavirus, Environmental Crisis and Wars, the Three Pandemics. The floor is yours. All, all the things concerned with um, uh, the pandemic is changing uh, hour after hour. And uh, I think that the, the, the best uh, thing uh, for, for starting uh, is to make uh, a fly over some non-traditional figures. First of all, our, our planet, our biosphere, is uh, uh, one of the sites where we found the biodiversity, of course, but uh, we found uh, humans. And uh, according to the, the last uh, figures, we are near 7.6 7 billion people. And uh, it's important to, to note that uh, uh, this, uh, in this time is exactly one year after the first lockdown uh, by the SARS-CoV-2 uh, coronavirus started in Wuhan. It's exactly, uh, they started uh, one year ago. Thus, we have uh, 7.6 billion people. And uh, the figures that uh, uh, we have now, these, these figures have, have, are, uh, have been produced by World Health Organization uh, in this moment. We have uh, uh, the uh, 28th January, uh, a total of uh, uh, 100 million, uh, 200,000, uh, 107 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Uh, SARS-CoV-2 is the virus and COVID is the disease. And until uh, 10 uh, in this morning, the total number of deaths is 2,158,767. Uh, uh, people that uh, uh, were diseased uh, all over the world. Um, uh, personally, uh, I, I live in Cordoba, in Argentina, 
And in Argentina today, we have a total of 1,086,000 uh, 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 people affected by COVID-19. And we have a total of uh, more than 47,000 deaths. Uh, that's the, the first issue to be uh, addressed and before the analysis of all the different uh, pandemics that we consider is that uh, uh, this is a very serious situation. This is not uh, a joke. This is not uh, a uh, result of uh, imagination. This is a real and very serious disease. And uh, uh, I, I was thinking that uh, a very interesting thing. This is a war. This is a war between humans and a species of virus. Uh, the virus, uh, this virus, uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, is a very small virus, as most of the virus. And the very interesting thing is that we cannot see them. Uh, the biodiversity in our planet could be divided in two different and strange universes. One, the biodiversity that uh, we can see and biodiversity that we cannot see. And this is the case of, uh, of the virus. The SARS-CO2 virus is a very small one. Um, and uh, uh, it's interesting to note uh, how many virus uh, we have a person being healed of uh, COVID, how many uh, virions, how many unities of virus they have in the body. This is very important to measure uh, the difference between figures. Um, one single person, one single person uh, in the peak of the infection has one billion of virus in his body. Mm -hmm. We are talking uh, of uh, uh, 1,000 millions of virus. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if we are talking of um, in the peak, the total of virions of uh, uh, virus unities uh, in the peak of infection, we are talking of 100 billion virus in one single person. Mm -hmm. Thus, you know, one human and 100 billion viruses inside the body of the person. And uh, the total weight of uh, all this virus in one single person uh, is around one microgram. No, it's a very small uh, biomass uh, from one microgram to 0 0.1 milligrams. But uh, the most disturbing figure, uh, this data come from the research of Sanders and his team, is that currently, today, um, 28th uh, January, all the biomass of viruses all over the world, that means all the virus contained uh, in the bodies of all the people affected, uh, is one kilogram. Uh, this is a very strange figure that uh, 7.6 billion people is affected by one kilogram of viruses all over the world because this is the weight of all the virus acting uh, now uh, in the world. And uh, this is uh, this show to us that uh, this kilo kilogram of uh, invisible uh, virus is disturbing all the human uh, organization in a lot of countries. But um, uh, for us, it's an 
previous to consider this universe uh, that we call uh, the viral pandemic, uh, the environmental pandemic and wars, and to, to explain why, I make it as some list on which are the most important things to take in account for considering the situation that we face. And never forgot, because you will don't found uh, maybe in newspapers, that one kilogram of virus are produced in all this big, big mess. Um, this is, we cannot understand, uh, we cannot understand what is happening with uh, the pandemics if we don't understand humans, we, we don't understand uh, homo sapiens. Uh, we are now the generation, more or less, generation number 4,000. We are the uh, 4,000 generation uh, in, in, of humans in the world. We are talking of around 150 to 100,000 years, which is uh, the time that we are living in, in planet Earth. Uh, that's one of the uh, characteristics is that we are the generation number two, 5,000, but in each generation, we have more information, cultural information, because genetic information is more or less the same, um, or at least don't, don't change so quickly. Each generation has more information than the previous one. Mm -hmm. That means that our information has been increasing year by year, and at the same time, our behavior and our ecological niche have been growing, growing and growing in average. And uh, this uh, involved a very uh, strange experiment because for surviving in most of our current uh, highly biodiverse ecosystems, we need to be predictable. Being predictable is the key for surviving in ecosystem. But uh, Homo sapiens started a new experiment. And this experiment is to change all the time. Taking account when you walk in a forest or in a grassland, uh, with thousands of pitches, 99.99% uh, .99 of these pitches are predictable. They make the same things generation after generation with very small changes. But humans change their behavior day by day and increasing the information and increasing in average the size of their ecological uh, niches. This is totally new and taking account that uh, at the same time we are not homogeneous. Uh, for example, the Biaguanini people, uh, I work with them, they uh, use for surviving more or less uh, 3,000 kilocalories per day. Uh, a people, a very rich people in the United States spent uh, a total of around 400,000 kilocalories per day. And Mr. Bill Gates, which is a very big problem for humanity because he spent a lot of energy and uh, create a lot of problems also, uh, Bill Gates spent around 20 million kilocalories per person per day. That means that this is our, our uh, cultural planet. And uh, some things, um, some variables um, create a special scenario for this war between one species of virus and one species of mammals like, like us. Um, one of these is that uh, uh, human population is growing permanently, that in each year we have more and more people. And, uh, but not solely we have more and more people, but we have more concentrated people. Um, we're talking of very dense populations. Mm -hmm. A very important thing when we are considering war with a virus. 
uh, at the same time, we have not solely uh, an increasing population and dense and very, very dense uh, uh, populations in cities, but at the same time, uh, we have an uh, unprecedented movement of people all over the world. Of course, now it's relatively quiet, comparatively with uh, January of 2020. But the reality is that uh, all this uh, system of um, cities, of countries, of people, are very easily connected by plane, by train, and different systems of transport. Thus, virus contained in people can move in hours uh, from very distant places. Thus, this is also absolutely unprecedented, the um, rapidity, the speed of distribution of uh, people, for example, having a COVID-19. Uh, COVID uh, another uh, very important issue is that there is an unprecedented lack of access in most of the people to health systems. What means that uh, uh, most of humanity have no access to good system of health. One of the more strange examples is one of the most the powerful countries in the world, United States. United States has one of the worst systems of health. That means that in one of the richest countries in the world, uh, they have one of the poorest system of health in the world. And this is very important um, because if you don't have very good system of health, when you are in a war with a virus, you are, of course, in a problem. The, the, another issue, a very important link with the health system, is the extremely, extremely low carrying capacity. Carrying capacity in our formula, K, is uh, uh, which is the, the quantity, quantity of, uh, for example, beds available in hospital for the treatment of various um, serious uh, uh, stages of COVID. And this is very small in most of the countries. That during this war between the virus and you Homo sapiens, uh, one of the limits is uh, how many beds for uh, specific treatment, how many physicians, how many specialized people we have for addressing uh, the treatment of infected people. And this uh, the current capacity of this variable is very low. That is, you know, uh, is a permanent challenge between increasing of uh, uh, infected people and decreasing of capacities in a uh, hospital. Like uh, it is happening now in Brazil, in the city of Manaus, which is, you know, is like uh, uh, very, very dark and very, uh, sad situation. Um, besides uh, being, uh, besides having this uh, uh, small carrying capacity, uh, we have an unprecedented, unprecedented production of scientific information around SARS-CoV-2, the virus, and COVID-19. This is very interesting because uh, uh, this information has free access uh, all the information linked with the virus uh, can be accessed freely uh, 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 all over the world. But at the same time, and, uh, and I forgot this, uh, we have not only uh, science working through uh, fair reviewed papers with reference, but also this is a lot of preprints. That means that we are so affected by the disease that uh, there is a lot of uh, papers published without, uh, uh, without uh, this peer reviewed system. Mm -hmm. Because we are in a so strange situation that we need all the information. Um, but at the same time, we have unprecedented uh, available of uh, uh, social networks like Facebook, 
Instagram, uh, Twitter, and in unprecedented distribution of fake news is information that is distorting, disturbing uh, the uh, existence of real and proved information. And uh, this fake news is increasing. Um, one uh, is increasing the use of not regulated drugs uh, for the treatment of COVID. Um, this fake information is increasing the number of people against vaccination. Uh, uh, but not only uh, in these matters, there is also an increase of anti-lockdown people. Thus, we are we are facing we are in the middle of a war a war between a virus and Homo sapiens, but we have uh, internal disturbances that increase our strategy for trying to face this uh, situation. That's uh, the title of the conference is that we consider that uh, our main three menaces, not solely vis-a-vis -vis the virus, but the three main menaces are one is the viral pandemic, not solely this one, but all the previous and the future viral, viral and also bacterial pandemics. The second universe is uh, the uh, environmental pandemic, is the destruction of biodiversity, which is the main problem of humanity. The second one is climate change. Even if you <laughs> perceive that for a lot of people, climate change is one and biodiversity is second for from a strict and technical scientific point of view uh, everything linked with uh, uh, the global uh, change in biodiversity is our uh, first uh, first situation this uh, the second universe is the universe of environmental pandemics which is in, in this environmental pandemic, the issue of biodiversity is the main issue. And being realistic, the virus is part of the biodiversity. Thus, uh, biodiversity is very important. And the number three is wars, because uh, not solely nuclear war, not solely uh, chemical uh, war, but uh, all violence involved in, in, in wars the possibility and holocaust uh, by nuclear devices uh, still remains. Thus, uh, these are our, our three main pan pandemies, and uh, we will try to, to make a, a, a summary of uh, each of them for understanding uh, uh, which is the situation and which are uh, the steps that we need to, uh, to reduce uh, with time the effects because I, I need to be very clear um, now all our humanity and civilization is defined by an exponential mm, 2 4 8 16 32 that is our culture is exponential we are exponentialists each of you me we are exponentialists the problem is that for surviving in our biosphere, for surviving in a very, very um, uh, complex uh, biodiverse, biodiversity system like ours, the only way for surviving is the sigmoid cool. That means that all the processes uh, develop under a carrying capacity but now we are over the carrying capacity all our minds are exponential all our inventions are exponential thus we are developing a quite different strategy of the biodiversity biodiversity work with sigmoid foods and humans work with exponential and this is a of course, a very, very uh, uh, bad, uh, bad thing. 
Um, that's, I have been, I said that this is our problem, that uh, this is our context, that we have problem of survival, independently of the virus. Now we face problem of survival in the short, medium and long term. Coming back to the virus, it's important to say that in the last 2,500 years, um, humanity suffered 72 uh, pandemics and epidemics, but also uh, syndemics. Uh, we, we, we are talking of uh, a pandemic when a pandemic when you have one virus or, or one bacteria uh, uh, reproducing uh, in a big scale within uh, people, within uh, humans. But we also have a uh, syndemic. Uh, the, the, the syndemic when you are suffering simultaneously pandemic, for example, uh, SARS-CoV-2, or in Argentina, we have at the same time dengue, which is another virus. And uh, uh, this means that uh, the population is faced to two different viruses. That's we have a long history of contact and uh, so, so, solely for, for remember, remembering uh, this um, during the past uh, in, in the middle middle age uh, we were produced by not by a bio virus but by bacteria uh, more than 200 million people died from a total in Europe of around near 400. Well, half the population of Europe died uh, in the middle age of uh, this bacteria. And the Spanish flu, uh, which is not Spanish because this uh, pandemic started in Texas, in the United States, uh, even we have different figures. The, in 1918, 1919, uh, during the, 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 the First uh, World War, uh, the total uh, of death um, was around 80 to 100 million people. Uh, I try to say that uh, uh, pandemics, epidemics and syndemics uh, uh, is part of our uh, daily life uh, in different, uh, uh, different uh, episodes. And um, this is important because uh, this particular pandemic is not the, the, the worst, and this is not the last. Uh, we can expect uh, pandemics more serious than this one. So this is very important to have this in, in, in mind. Um, of course, concerning this, this pandemic, we need to say that this is not an invented virus by strange laboratories, uh, people with uh, faces uh, uh, that they don't show. This is a virus that more certainly arrived the, from Abad, from Rhinolophus affinis. Rhinolophus affinis has a virus, uh, the bad cov rtg 113 and this, uh, this virus has, and uh, in, we would call uh, and, uh, simi a genetic similarity of uh, around 96.2%. Uh, That's what happened? Maybe a virus in a bad population was living in balance with the bad population, but uh, some person, uh, some persons, plural, uh, um, broke it the uh, the cycle, the closest cycle of the bat and the virus, and the virus uh, moved outside uh, Rhinolophus affinis, for example and then started our pandemic because uh, Homo sapiens um, was provided, of course, with immune system, inherited uh, immune system and uh, developed uh, immune system, but in most of the case, without capacity for controlling the virus. It is important to say that uh, uh, the majority of humans they have natural system of uh, immunity. I repeat, inherited plus uh, the developed immune system that could uh, that stop the virus. 
but uh, in a huge uh, amount, uh, a huge uh, number of people, uh, there is no there is no capacity of reaction, and the virus produces the disease. Uh, thus, this is our uh, situation, and uh, it is clear that if uh, in being faced to the virus to this kilogram of virus that is producing all the mess all over the world, if we face, uh, we are facing this virus, if we take the decision that uh, most of scientists agree that we cannot talk of uh, uh, herd immunity, of the group immunity, uh, if we decide not to do nothing and to wait or to see or or to use fake news uh, everywhere, it is expected that uh, around uh, 70 million people will die. Eh? Uh, There's now uh, memorandum that was published by The Lancet, clearly explicit that uh, if you take this strategy of non-action with all the is uh, current capacity of all hospitals absolutely uh, plenty uh, without any kind of vaccine, without any kind of control, we will have more than uh, 70 million people. That's, this is the, the reality of, uh, the, um, of the pandemic. And of course, a lot of countries have been developing vaccines which is a method for pushing the development of uh, antibodies within each person. Thus, we are not introducing antibodies. Each person creates the antibodies according to the vaccine they received. The second universe is environment. Uh, the environment, at the same time that we face uh, the, big, um, the big disease, uh, our environment is in the worst situation of uh, our uh, human history. That means that each day we have the worst environmental situation than the day before. Um, and this is very important to explain because um, we don't know which is the biodiversity of our planet. This is, seems stupid. We know a lot of stupid things, but we don't know which is the richness of biodiversity in our planet. Uh, we have already classified uh, less than 2 million species, but uh, it is expected that we have in our planet, uh, uh, figures very recent talk about 8.59 million species, most of them now species. And thus, uh, we are reducing biodiversity, but biodiversity that we never uh, classified. Uh, talking solely in terms of virus, it is important to mention that uh, we have now around uh, 6,000 uh, classified species of virus, virus area ARN or ADN, and remem we remember that uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 is a ARN virus. We have 6,000 classified species, but we have an expected uh, quantity of UNCNOW virus of around 900,000 species of virus. Mm -hmm. That's very strange that we are destroying biodiversity that we don't know. And the problem is that uh, if we uh, broke the biodiversity and if we broke closed systems where some species uh, are existing with virus, one of the risks is that, that this virus can go outside this cycle and start a process like the one we are facing with SARS-0-2. Um, thus, we have also another problem. We are reducing uh, in a, a absolutely nonsense level the biodiversity of our planet and we have less and less and less biological stability. This is very important. The biological and the uh, ecodiversity stability 
is more and more reduced and humans don't understand that this is very bad. We can be adapted uh, with a lot of suffering to climate change, but we cannot be adapted to the reducing, strong reducing of biodiversity. This is a very important thing. More biodiversity we have, more possibilities in fully direct ways for controlling some hazardous population of virus and bacteria. More simplistic are our ecosystem, more serious is the uh, vision for the future of interaction between humans, virus and bacteria. Uh, but at the same time, we are reducing biodiversity, but strangely, we are increasing undesired biodiversity. All GMOs, all these genetically modified organisms, are introducing new genetic uh, proofs, uh, new genetic experiments in a, bio, uh, in a biosphere uh, which uh, where the, biodiversity, the, the natural biodiversity is more and more reducing. And uh, finally, the, the chapter or the universe number three is worlds. Uh, we are a stupid species. This is, I think this is not news. Uh, it's bad for these people that thought that uh, we are intelligent. The concept of intelligence is a very strange thing, strange matter. But when you have people uh, fighting for having the vaccines independently of the problem of remaining countries, when you're thinking that poor countries will receive vaccines in 2000, 23, something is, something is bad. But particularly this issue of wars uh, involve a permanent risk in our population and uh, uh, is added to the remaining uh, pandemics. Um, when we are talking of wars and being realistic, in the last, uh, the last uh, 100 wars to wars and to violent conflicts. They killed in wars around 400 million people. 400 million people have been killed during, during wars. And uh, as ever, because we are stupid leaders, uh, we are stupid armies, we are stupid generals, and we are stupid uh, development of nuclear weapons. Um, in the worst uh, 100 uh, wars, uh, civilian people that died during, during wars, the figure uh, is uh, 266 million people. Uh, meanwhile, solely 49 million people, soldiers, died. That means that during violent episodes, during wars, the people that most suffer are civilians, not the big leaders and not the big generals. Usually, it's the civilian people that is suffering. And now, in this momentum we are talking, there is people dying in conflicts. And we are, even today, um, having in front of us the possibility of uh, Holocaust by, by nuclear weapons, because uh, we still have countries having uh, nuclear devices, and a lot of countries having nuclear devices. Thus, um, these are our uh, three main universes that are interacting. And we have, uh, in this system of interaction, a uh, lot of effects by the viral pandemic, by the environmental pandemic, and by this war pandemic. And they are all moving at the same time. And if you use any of the system of news that are available in, in the planet, you will see how these different kinds of crises 
and different kinds of pandemics are in some way refractory. That's what we can do. And uh, this is a very important, important issue. And uh, first of all, we cannot divide, we cannot analyze separately viral pandemics, environmental pandemics, and wars. And to take in account that the source of our problems are some issues, very, um, very sad issues that are happening in our different uh, kind of cultures. Humans have unprecedented uh, inequalities. We have very rich people and very poor people, and we consider normal this. It's not normal to have rich people. Richness is a bad thing, but poverty is also a bad thing. And we consider normal to have rich and poor people, and this is not normal. This is not a good vision, not a good perception, that this is one of the reality we have these incredible differences. We have these uh, inequalities, inequalities in all the issues, economic, environments, power, health, poor and rich people in the top, with 80% in average of all the um, money around the world and of the power of the world, uh, exerts a development uh, um, displayed by 20% of the population. That this is one of the problems that face, and we need to consider that lifestyles, and I repeat, lifestyles are the key source of all the disturbations, all, of all the um, things that we uh, are perceiving in this viral pandemic, the environmental pandemic, and wars. Lifestyles are exactly in this place. Think that currently European countries are fighting, and most of them fighting isolatedly for having the higher number of vaccines. They are fighting for having more vaccinated people using their um, economic capacity. And at the same time, we have countries in the world that they have absolutely no capacity for buying vaccines. And this is the reality of our world. Despite this small universe of anti-vaccines, anti-rights people, anti-lockdown, etc., etc. This happened uh, during uh, the, the Spanish badly name it the Spanish uh, flu, and uh, it is happening now. I remember that uh, uh, if you read what happened during the Spanish flu, uh, one of the fake news uh, distributed was that uh, uh, you can kill all the viruses of the Spanish flu uh, smoking. And uh, one of the secondary measures uh, uh, it was easy to read this in the newspapers at uh, this time, the uh, 1918 uh, uh, and 1919. Uh, um, you can read, for example, in the newspapers in Madrid, that the best for uh, reducing the disease, the pandemic flu, was not only smoking, which is a very stupid recipe, but uh, taking uh, arsenic. Yeah? And uh, if you make operation with dioxide of chlor here, it's the same uh, stupid approaches that uh, you found it uh, in the past and you face now. That's lifestyles and how uh, the people is developing the size of their ecological niches is uh, strictly linked with the universe of the three pandemics. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, 
this is um, for us one of the big pictures that we have um, the title of this uh, chapter is uh, how one kilogram of virus can uh, discharge all uh, humanity of 7.6 billion of, of people but um, uh, most important as this, I think, is that uh, we need to take in account that we cannot address the issue of the pandemics by SARS-CoV-2 solely using the traditional variables. We need to make uh, some connections between these different pandemics and take it in account which is the source of our bad experiment as humans because most of these things are happening because all the indicators show shows that our experiment as human is working very 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 bad and uh, this is like a red light that call us uh, to introduce new institutions new relationships and new goals and new ways of uh, work because uh, everything is showing to us that we continue in the same way and everything will be worse and we of course we need to reduce in terms of uh, all the system of vaccines because we don't have time we have um, we can produce it um, a document with all all the steps for facing this kind of situation but one of the most important things to say is that um, all the vaccines for uh, pushing the bodies of people to develop antibodies uh, all vaccines need to have free patents is we cannot accept that uh, meanwhile people is dying we have uh, wars between pharmaceutical companies and wars between governments having more or less money that for us is important uh, to uh, establish that all the system of patents of uh, these vaccines need to be free mm -hmm, and not to be under the control of uh, markets and the same if for drugs that reduce the population of uh, virus we need also to have um, free patents for this uh, universe and of course we need to revise it world health organization um, it is clear that the world health organization was relatively weak for facing this uh, international challenge. Thus, we need to revise it and maybe to create new institution, not solely for the scanning of virus, virus and the scanning of uh, new challenges and new menaces, but also for not uh, facing the situation that we are facing, that uh, we are fighting for having more vaccines. We need to have a more intelligent uh, approach for reducing this, uh, this uh, impact. And um, we can talk a lot of things, but I, I prefer to, to, to see your reactions um, and maybe through this to analyze some things, because I forgot to mention, I forgot to mention that uh, um, when we are facing this war between one kilogram of virus and 7.6 billion of people um, we don't understand what biodiversity means we don't understand we don't know uh, which is the biodiversity that live now in our planet and i need to remember uh, uh, a cool a mathematical cool uh, uh, this uh, particular curve um, is a curve that defines which is the organization 
of the, the biodiversity that protect each of the species inside this biodiversity. In other words, which is the curve of biodiversity that protects also humans. And this curve, the name is Hyperbola equilatora. It's thousands of species living at the same time with dominant species in an histogram in this side and small population of rare species in this one and we need all the biodiversity for being protected. We can reduce the release of carbon dioxide. This is fine because global climate change is a very serious situation. But take care that we don't stop destruction of biodiversity. These hyperbola sequilateras that define uh, the best way for being protected in the university will be destroyed. And it is not possible to survive without the hyperbola sequilateras of biodiversity. It seems a little bit strange in terms uh, because we have been talking of uh, exponentials of sigmoids and now hyperbola sequilateras. But the good science provides instruments because science is this, science is description, uh, instruments for being used. And it's absolutely more important to understand what means an hyperbola equilatera, an exponential or a sigmoid curve than uh, a speech of uh, Donald Trump now in the past. Mm -hmm. Because one of the problems that we face in our social organization is that uh, we are not protected from crazy leaders like uh, it happened in the state with Donald Trump and is happening now in Brazil with Jair Bolsonaro. People with this amount of information take in their hands the life of millions of people and this is very, very, very dangerous because these people, Donald Trump or Jay Bolsonaro, solid examples, there is more people. If we look, for example, in Saudi Arabia, we have a lot of people that uh, are like, you know, allied people of virus. They work for the virus. In this war between the kilogram of barrels and the 7.6 7 billion of people, there is people working in the side of the virus. Anti-vaccines, anti-lockdown, uh, all these bad leaders in different parts of the world, they are, they are working in the party of the Barrett. And we need to, to have very to clear this. And finally, not solely the importance is of consider the system with all these, these variables, but I think that uh, one important thing is that mobilization of people with good information, not with, with uh, uh, fake news, the mobilization of people fighting, fighting, uh, speaking to the media, fighting in the streets, peacefully, not violating laws, is the key for controlling all the disturbances of governments, uh, disturbances of big corporations, because, uh, you know, the big corporations linked with uh, pharmaceuticals or information, they have much more power than even before. That we need to have very sensitive people moving, analyzing, accurate information for being in the streets. The academy is good, is good, but the academy is also a source of problems. Thus, we need to make a new uh, multilateral organization of people fighting 
uh, a sensitive academia providing good science and uh, taking in account, I insist that uh, the SARS CoV 2 is not the worst pandemic and it is not the last one. And we need to learn, even having so many stupid leaders all over the world, not in all the countries, but in several countries we have, that we need to be very um, sensitive and uh, available for reacting and for moving through the networks, in the streets, in the court of justice, even moving in the court of justice. Mm -hmm. And finally, I will repeat, uh, uh, for me, it's like a definition of fighting. Um, this is uh, a very nice definition. Uh, we need to fight, uh, not solely uh, without fear, but we need to fight even without hope. This was said by Sandro Pertini. I repeat, we need to fight, not solely without fear, because a lot of people is killed for defending the right of people. We, we need to fight not solely without fear, but to also fight without hope. Okay, I think that now we can, this is finished, uh, we can open the um, criticism requests and this kind of things. <laughs>